So I have another Sophia Petrillo story today, and I'm not going in chronological order um, with this person and the stories. It's like I'm going from when I first met her to things that happened in the, I think, about 20 year span. And today I'm going to address how the friendship ended. And I saved some texts from Facebook Messenger, and I guess you might call them receipts of how um, how she finally did the final blow. Um, I think that this probably would make more sense if you had all the other stories in between, but... I'm doing this today anyway, even though it's out of sequence. So I had mentioned in previous videos where I'm talking about personal stuff that over the years I would join different organizations and clubs and everything as a social outlet. And sometimes from these organizations, I made friends, and uh, most of the times it was acquaintances or people that you just met once or twice. So they were bare acquaintances, and you had a nice time, and there was no drama, because I really I don't have the stomach anymore for drama and games and nonsense. I haven't for a long time. I think that's why I like these groups. So, um... When I started attending these events, or whatever you want to call them, I did not really tell Sophia Petrillo because she was a very overbearing, controlling person. Now, that could be a good thing because they're organized, um, they, they're on top of things, they're a good source of knowledge when, when you have people like that, but they could also be very controlling and... Um, kind of get in the way of 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 things um so i had these outings that i did not really clue her into and um one particular night in the fall i was getting ready it was maybe late afternoon because I was fussing with the hair and the makeup and everything. We were going to a nice restaurant in Fishkill. In fact, it was the Aroma Asteria off of Route 9 in Fishkill, New York. I remember that. And so I'm getting ready, and I don't have all of my makeup on yet. And out of the blue, we weren't like texting or talking on the phone or doing anything. Out of the blue, I get like a text from her through Facebook Messenger. And she says, I saw this and thought of you. And it was a mem. Is that how you say it? M-E-M-E, -M -E, mem. That said... Lady in the streets, asleep in the sheets. And when I looked at it, I thought it was a disparaging comment. And um, I didn't want to, like she was trying to upset me, almost as if she knew I was going out. Or she was trying to start something, and she wanted me to, like she was taking a poke, and she wanted me to react. And initially, I started getting upset, and I think I almost started to cry, or at a certain point, or maybe I did cry, and I stopped. I said, no, 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 this is what she wants you to do. Cry, ruin your makeup, keep you from going out and having a good time, wanting you to go into an emotional tailspin and stay at home, kind of... This woman had gradually started um, shredding over the last few years my identity as like a woman, my identity as um, a woman who still attracted members of the opposite sex. She uh, tried to shred um, a lot of things about me. 
But then at other times, she was my friend. So that's why I stayed friends. But like I was starting to gradually over the last few years put up boundaries, you know. I was trying to take the best and leave the rest. So uh, I I was a little uncertain of the specific meaning of lady in the streets, asleep in the sheets. But I knew it was an insult, and I did not want to dwell on it. I was needing to finish getting ready and go to this dinner that I RSVP'd, yes. There were going to be a lot of people there. It was a beautiful venue, and I was not going to let her ruin that for me. Plus, I didn't want to be driving in the dark because it was getting darker earlier, in the dark, in a state of emotional distress during rush hour because it was also rush hour at that time. And I said, I'm not going to let her rent space in my head or ruin the evening. And I got myself together, which for me was like a, you know, progress from the last several years prior to that. So I get there and I see people that I've met before. And um, thank God that the climate of the people were a little friendlier than other times. And I didn't say anything that I was upset or that there was an incident beforehand. I sat at the table. I didn't bring it up. I was chatty. But I guess something must have shown somehow. And a couple of people that had met me more than once said something or, or, or like not like something's wrong. Like, are you all right? Like they said, you're not you know, yourself. I said, oh, oh no, 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 I I'm okay. They said, no, you're, you know, you're acting fine. Uh, like, because I had asked them, am, am I seeming, they said, no, you're acting fine, but we could just tell you're usually much more, um, you know, bubbly or animated or, and, and I said, well, yes, but, you know, I'm here to have a dinner and, and that we're all here to have a good time and have the dinner and blah, blah, blah. And then they said, a couple of them, the nicer people said, well, if you want to talk, you know, why not? We're here. To, we always want to hear a story, whatever. I said, well, maybe after dinner, I said, I actually have some texts. I said, after we eat, you know, and it was one of those things that went well. We had our own room, actually, in the restaurant. But there were that many people. There were two long rectangular tables. I think there must have been 40 people that night. So after dinner, I get my phone out, and I show this one woman, let's call her Ray. I said, well, okay, if you're willing to listen, I won't tell you everything, but what does this mean? And I showed the text of the meme. And the, everyone was starting to look at it, like passing the phone around on, at my table, not the other table. And they were like, well, I'm not exactly sure, but it doesn't look good. And then someone else said, it almost sounds like they're saying you're a prostitute. <laughs> and uh, then someone else said, well, lady in the streets, it's not an insult, but asleep in the sheets. They said, yeah, this is definitely like an insult. Everybody unanimously agreed. They weren't certain about the exact meaning. And then um, someone said, oh, they had like a younger daughter that they could like ask her or whatever. And then I said, well, when I get home, I'm going to ask my niece because my niece is in on everything. And she's getting her Ph.D. in psychology and she's been to top colleges. She's doing her internship. Braggity brag alert. She's doing her internship this year at John Hopkins in Baltimore. So anyway, <laughs> but this was a couple of years ago when she was at either Gainesville or um, she was in Indianapolis too. Um, I know Cincinnati. I, I want, well, anyway, I'm going off on a tangent. So they're agreeing that this is not good. And then they kind of wanted to know the backstory, and it was too complex, it was too much. So I just basically said I had been friends with this woman for 20 years, and I started seeing her in the last couple of years start to get 
like um, nasty towards me and um, kind of competitive and jealous and catty and she hadn't been that way prior. And they said, well, you ask your niece, and they said, this is not a friend. This is not something that a friend says to you. And, and I said, why do you think I'm coming to these groups? Because, <laughs> you know, like certain friendships are headed south or have headed south. So um, I get home. You know, I decompress. I have a doggy bag for the son that I lived with. And uh, I get changed, and I call up my niece, and thank God she was available. And uh, she calls me up, and she says, Aunt Jeannie, it's not good. And I said, well, tell me what it means. And she said, it's an insult. It's like saying that you suck in bed, that you look good, but that you suck in bed, like false advertising. And I said, what? I said, how does anyone really know about my intimate life? They only know maybe what I choose to share with them. But if they're not my partner and they're not there with me, they really don't know what goes on. So um, I have the texts and I might put them in the uh, video part of this. But basically... This person sent me these texts. I waited till I got back. And, oh, before I left, I thought that she was showing me something that somebody sent me. And I made a comment like, who's sending me these mean texts? This is mean. What is this? And then I realized it was her sending it to me. So then... She replied, and, and she backpedaled and tried to say it was a compliment. And I knew it wasn't because she had taken shots at me like this in the in the past, like recent past to, to when this happened. And, like, she was trying to start a fight. And, I, uh, and when you see the text, I don't have them right in front of me, but, like, I kind of said, like, you know, I'm offended by this. This is, like, mean or rude or whatever. Like, what's going on? Have you been drinking? Like, what's going on, you know, with this? And um, then she tried to backpedal. She took no responsibility. She didn't apologize. Then she ended it with, well, you told me you're not interested in sex anymore. She used to ask me about what was going on in my personal life, like she was trying to compare notes, and I refused to tell her, and I brushed it off with, well, you know, I'm older now, so sex isn't as important to me as when I was younger. Okay. Well, um... After that evening, she started, she sent me, I think, at least one email, and I didn't read it, but the title, the header of the title of the email said, you have rage disorder. I deleted it without even reading it. She left phone uh, voicemail messages, like, telling me off. And I blocked and deleted because I felt that at this point, this person had snapped and was dangerous. And this is what happened. When I knew her, when I first met her, I was busy. I was raising two kids. I was working full time. I had a house. And I did not... Um, I would say I didn't fuss that much with my appearance. So I think that my appearance was not intimidating. As I got older, I lost weight. I changed how I did my hair. I started to wear makeup again. And I started dressing better because now I had a little money. The kids were older. And I was getting a lot of attention. And if that makes me a narcissist to say it, if I'm bragging... I'm sorry, but when I started taking care of myself again, like I did prior to being married and having children, I started getting a lot of attention from men, age-appropriate men, but definitely, like, tons of attention, 
and um, she wasn't, and she was like this desperate to get a second husband. I was not. I did not want to remarry. Actually, at the time, I was still separated. I was not yet divorced. I liked going on dates. If I met someone very special, I could have a long-term relationship, but I didn't have an agenda of let me go out like a rodeo where they lasso the calf and tie it up to get a husband. I did not have that attitude. I had a very laid back attitude and a lot of the men that I met that were interested in me said that they noticed that and they liked it. And I'm sorry again if I'm bragging, but it, it is what it is. I, I would be like not pursuing. I was the one getting pursued. And when we went out to all these different things socially, um, she saw that and she saw the changes in me over the year that I was more over the years, that I was more confident, that I was less um, financially unstable. Like, you know, when I first met her, I was like, oh, I'm always broke, I'm always this. Now I had a little, you know, I had evolved a little bit and I was in a better place in my life. And I had a little more confidence and I had a little bit more going on for me. And she was just really freaking jealous. Jealous, jealous, jealous. I have other stories. I did find out that she went after um, one of my serious long-term relationship boyfriends after the fact. And she definitely knew it was him. But there was an extreme competitiveness with her. And I believe that she was stirring the pot prior to this. I have other stories that I will tell in other videos that kind of the timeline will fill in. But today I'm talking about this. And I did not respond or react to the previous attempts she made to start a fight. And this time I didn't fight. I just said what I said. You'll see it in the texts. And she elevated it into like a, uh, a hissy fit, histrionic, crazy, um, she may have been drinking, um, but that was it. She got blocked. She got deleted. And I have not seen or heard from her since then. It bothered me, and maybe it still does, but not like severely. Because I never stood up to her face to face and addressed it and told her off. So maybe me making these videos is a way of getting back at her and I'm kind of doing it in a passive aggressive way. But I'm venting and I'm telling you, anyone that's listening, regardless of your gender, if you've been friends with someone and you started the friendship out when you were at a certain point in your life, and you worked on yourself and you improved yourself and your um, financial and maybe your physical appearance and your um, employment and all of that kind of went up and they stayed the same. They will now feel threatened by you and they will want to pull you down because you are not the same person that they met like 20 years ago. And the resentments and, and the cattiness that other women can do. And I know because at times I've done it myself. But I don't think I've ever went to the level of this woman. And um, in other videos I'm going to still tell more stories about her. Things kind of will make more sense. Because I'm going back and forth in the timeline of about a 20 year span. Because I'm remembering different stories and incidences that happened. Um, but when somebody does this to you. I think the best thing to do is just amputate. Amputate if at all possible. If it's a coworker, you just really need to back down, back off. Do not react because that's what they want. They want to poke you so that you explode. Then they could say, see, I told you she was crazy. And make it look like you're the crazy one when in reality... They are the crazy one. So everybody, have a great day. And watch out for the Sophia Petrillos in your life. Love you. Bye.